spiritually benefited ourselves tremendously. Let's ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to hear and share that which will be of most benefit to myself and all of us here. And that He inspires us to say something that will become a means of us getting closer to Allah and rejuvenating our Iman. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. This topic has been called, you know, the abode of peace. Or more so over the, the, the translation of the word Darus Salam. And so the idea is focusing on a few verses of the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal uses the word Darus Salam in the Quran and the meanings behind that and see how we can reflect on it in terms of our journey of the soul in this retreat. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء إنما مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض مما يأكل الناس والأنعام حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كلا تقن بالأمس كذلك نفصل الآية لقوم يتفكرون والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم للذين أحصل الحسن وزيادة ولا يرحق وجوههم قتر ولا ذلة أولئك أصحاب الجنة هم فيها خالدون صدق الله العظيم سورة يونس آية 24 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the example of this world, a parable of this world. And Allah says in the Quran, many places, Allah Azza wa Jal loves to give examples. Through examples, things start making sense. Through examples, things start making sense. So Allah Azza wa Jal uses all sorts of examples in the Quran to deliver a message home. And so, one example with regards to the temporal aspects of this world and the never-ending aspect of the hereafter, which is the theme of our retreat here. Allah says, the example of this worldly life, kama is like water. Anzallahu min sama which we have sent from the heavens, ard. This water goes in and seeps into the ground. And you see now, all sorts of vegetation growing. Vegetation that people eat, vegetables and other f sorts of things. وَلَنْعَامْ And even that vegetation which animals uh, eat and graze upon. حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضِ Until the earth became extremely green and lush. وَزَّيَّنَتْ Became beautiful. وَظَنَّ أَهْلُ وَأَنَّمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا And the people who owned those plantations, those lawns, those gardens, they began to think that they have full control over this and that they will soon be able to harvest everything that's in front of them. Ataha amruna layla. All of a sudden, our command of destruction of that farm, of those plantations, of those gardens, arrives. Laylan, sometimes the, arrive, the arrival is at night. Unaharan, sometimes destruction through a storm, a tornado, or anything else of that sort comes during the day. Fajalna hasida. We made this huge, till the eye can see, plantation and garden, stubble. That's it. It's all raised to the ground. As though it was absolutely of nothing, of no benefit just of yesterday. You had a full, an hour ago you could see six foot tall, high corn stalks. You could see lush gardens of tea or soya beans or wheat. But all of a sudden, such a punishment or such a natural disaster overtakes that, that it's completely gone. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِهِ This is how Allah expresses and explains His signs لِلنَّاسِ For the people لَعَلْهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ For them to ponder. Allah mentions in another place, He says, اِعْلَمُوا Know very well أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبْ This entire worldly life is just joy, play, لَهُ It's entertainment, زِينَة It's about competing with one another in beautification of yourselves, Tafakhur, it is about mutual competition in everything. Takathurun fil amwal, it's about mutual competition and how much wealth you can earn. Wal awlad, how many children you can have. This is what this worldly life is. These are the stages that we go through. That little, little child, he's go, he, what is he? He's so happy. If you give him one small water bottle like this, he'll sit there till, till after Isha, play with the cap. He's happy. He doesn't need anything else. He's sitting there trying to put the cap on the bottle. He can spend easy an hour on that. And he doesn't mind what the noise is, what's happening. MashaAllah, the little baby is happy with that. But soon, as the child gets older, 
Then the toys need to get bigger and they have to have more lights and more sounds and they have to have more features. And a child, a six-year-old would not be happy if you say the you know, children's program downstairs is learn how to p- try to put a water bottle cap on. Huh? They're not going to be very happy. They won't come back to the children's program again. That was very nice and happy for, and very fulfilling to a young baby. But as you grow older, our desires, our wishes, our ambitions change. And from one play to in, in one entertainment to the next, until it's the competition game. When we're in high school and college, it's about who's the most impress- who can impress the one- others. Who's got the n- n- nicest ha- hairstyle? Who's got the nicest car? Who's got the nicest haircut? Right? Who's got the nicest clothes? This is the competition. And then when you move on to college and beyond, it's about who's got the highest paying job. Who's got the most elite job? Who's got the most fanciest home? And competition in marriage, who's, the, who's got the most beautiful spouse? And then who's got the most children? Or who's got the most handsome children? And who's got the most high achieving children? This continues to happen throughout your life. Allah Azza wa says, eventually, He gives this, this is what we all have. This is similar to Ajab al-Kuffar and Abatu. It's an example of a farmer who is growing his farm and he sees from a small seed, a sapling has come about, a plant is growing and as this grows and grows, now it's tall, six foot, huge, beautiful fruit, fruit or vegetable bearing plant, fruit bearing tree. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَهُ مُسْفَرَّةً Fall comes, autumn comes, seasons change and the color starts changing and the weather starts changing and you see that everything that was green has become yellow. And what happens one day you wake up in November or December and you got frost. And you see hutama. That all of a sudden the entire ground is frozen. There's frost all over. And everything is, once you have a frozen fruit, a frozen plant is of no good. Or overnight, everything has been turned to stubble. ثُمَّ يَكُونَ hutama. Allah says, this is how this man's life is. He's going from stage to stage. And he keeps on going higher and higher up the ladder. Corporate ladder, socioeconomic ladder. Keep on increasing in his wealth, prominence, fame, name, and his residence keeps on just getting better and better, greater and greater, larger, and he's measuring his success based on his material gains. And then eventually a day comes when he goes to the bathroom and doesn't come back out. He goes to take a shower, and at last you hear from him. He goes to bed, and he doesn't wake up in the morning. He goes to work, you don't see him again. He's on the treadmill doing his morning run and he doesn't make it out of that. This is the norm, that you reach all the way to the top and then you fall instantaneously. It doesn't go slow also. Instantaneously, Allah says, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ When the end day comes, you've got only, when the day of judgment arrives, you've only got two options. Not multiple options, only two options. In this dunya, you have so many options in terms of success. Anything you have, you go, you know, you have multiple options. It's not a simple, in materialistically, someone says he's successful, he's failure. A person can earn 30,000, 50,000, 60, 80, 90, 100, 200, 250, 450, 650, million, 2 million, 3 million. There's so many layers of so-called okay, comfortable life. But in akhirah, it isn't like that. It's either you have it or you don't. If a person is going to hellfire, there's no chance of any level of, there's no silver lining in hellfire. Really, there isn't. There is no light at the end of the tunnel in hellfire. There is absolutely no positive ways, no way, no way to portray in a positive fashion. And when a person enters Jannah, then even if he's the last person to enter paradise, as you shall inshallah hear in the descriptions tomorrow, he's going to be receiving 10 times of that of this entire world. 10 times more than anyone in this entire world had. No, 10 times of what this world has to offer. That's going to be adana manzila. This is going to be the one who's got the lowest level of Jannah. So there is absolutely no such thing as when a person has entered Jannah, that he's got less. SubhanAllah, it comes in hadith, the two people will be meeting each other in Jannah. One of them looks at the other and he says, man, this person, he's more handsome than me. That happens. This person has got a nicer car than I have. This person is more beautiful than I am, etc. In Jannah, a person will meet another person and he sees, a thought will come to him that he's more handsome than me. But Allah says, no, 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 no. You can't think like that here. He really is. But I can't let you think like that. So what happens? Within that same majlis, within that same gathering, a transformation will take place within himself that he will begin to think that definitely there is no one more handsome than he is. Because Allah does not want anyone to feel any type of despondency, sadness, or depression in Jannah. There's obviously levels. There's millions of levels. But no one in any level will be allowed to think that he is lower than others. 
Because if you are always thinking you're lower than others, you're never going to be happy. We know how that is. A person has got an income of one million, but he still feels I'm lower than someone's got an income of two million. And that doesn't allow him to lead a happy life. Allah doesn't want us to be lead sad lives in Jannah. So the answer is that allow yourself to feel that Alhamdulillah, you are the best. And there are many ahadith with regards to this. That a person will look at someone and he thinks he's, he's handsome. And he say, I wish I had that. Allah Azza wa take him to the souk. There's going to be a souk in Jannah. And every week we'll go to visit that souk. And in that souk of Jannah, you will have actually uh, molds of various different faces. And a person will simply enter that, come out with a brand new face. Will come out with something that he will feel overwhelmed. He'll come back to his home. And inshallah, I hope one of the speakers will address this in more detail. The souk of Jannah is a beautiful, beautiful hadith. But when you'll come back home, you'll see his wives. And you will look at them. They will say, subhanAllah, they will say that you look so handsome. You look so different than when you left. And he will say to them and say to her that most definitely you actually look much, much more beautiful than you were when I left. And then he will respond to her by saying, how can I not look more handsome than when I left? Because I have just come back from the souq, from the marketplace of Jannah. And I've had the opportunity to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can I not be more beautiful than when I left you in the morning? Subhanallah, my beloved friends, that abode of paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this dunya is the opposite. That this dunya is fanny, that the more you go, Jannah is like, the higher you go, there's always another level. There's always another level. There's always another level. The dunya is not like that. The dunya is the higher you go, the closer you are to your demise. The older you get, what does that mean? The older you get, the closer you are to your death. And that's why the poet says that whenever, whenever something arrives at its highest pinnacle, whenever something arrives at the pinnacle of completion, then what happens? The nuqsan begins. When you get to the top of the mountain, what do you do? You don't climb <laughs> up into the air. You start making the hike down. SubhanAllah. That's why we say, we should never say we've completed our job. Oh, mashallah, one expansion is done. One, one, one wing is done. One program is done. Alhamdulillah, we've completed our mission. No. As soon as you say you complete your mission, then you're going to start going downhill. Or Allah will lift you away. That's what Allah Azza wa did with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصُرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ When the help of Allah will come and you will see thousands of armies of people entering, throws of people, throngs of people entering into Islam. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Mission is accomplished. Glorify Allah, seek forgiveness and now you have to come back. So we should never have an attitude that we're done. Because as soon as you get that attitude that you're done, then the downfall begins. A person should say, I'm just getting started. I am just getting started. And, and then you have that motivation till the last breath. Whenever Allah wants to pull us away, we go away. But never should we think that we have arrived and we've done our job. Because really, there's just too much work outside. Until and unless every single household is following deen. Unless and until every single household has sunnah of Rasulullah in it, our job is not done. And we are very, very, very far away from that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives this example in Surah Yunus. That when the garden is about to root fruition and a man thinks I'm going to be able to harvest all of this and become rich, Allah's adab comes and destroys it. What is the purpose of this verse? Amongst many beautiful other verses of the Quran is to compare the worldly life to the life of the hereafter. That there is no comparison. There is no such thing as comparison. You know people say let's balance your dunya and akhirah life. Balance. You always talk about the balancing act. We love to hear this again. Again and again, balancing act. You tell someone, brother, why don't you enroll in the summer intensive? You say, brother, I have to balance my life. Brother, why don't you send your daughter to the one-year program? Brother, I have to allow my daughter to balance her life. Brother, why don't you come do i'tikaf for three days in the retreat? My dear friend, I need to balance my life. This is the most oppressed word. Because we, if we haven't balanced, subhanAllah, dunya is 99.9999% of our efforts. And less than 1% of a 1% of a 1% is towards akhirah. Look at how many years, those of us who are in our 40s, in our 30s, those of us who are in 60s, look at the months of the year, days of the year, how much we have spent in preparation for earning dunya, how much of that has been spent in preparation for the akhirah. How many months, no, years, no, decades have been spent being schooled outside or so-called educated to get a certificate to simply bring the bread on home. White bread, brown bread, naan, roti, paratha. At the end of the day, it's just bread. The whole thing is that you're trying to eat bread. That's the whole reason we all go work. 
That's the whole reason we have 16, 18, 20 years of education. To bring bread home. And then you ask that same person, or I ask myself, how many years have you put in to answer the three questions of the grave? Man rabbuk, ma dinuk, wa ma taqulu fi hadha rajul. Sunday school is not going to cut it. If for bread, we're spending two decades. What about, subhanAllah, three questions of the grave, five questions on the day of judgment. How many years we ought to put into that? The haq, if you want to do the math, it should be we shouldn't be even allowed to take a breath for this dunya. Because you're comparing infinite to finite. And that's it, it's zero. The dunya compared to the akhirah is zero. So realistically speaking, if you do it from a very logical, mathematical perspective, then we should have actually spent zero amount of minutes and seconds for the dunya. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this place Darul Asbab, a place of means. He made this a Darul Imtihan, Darul Bala, and He made that place Darul Jaza. He sent us here to work. And so our education and our job, if done properly, will become deen. If done properly with the noble intention following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ will become deen. My beloved friends, but what we are reminded is that all of this is going to come to an end very soon. No one, the person who drives a $10,000 car and the one who drives a $3 million car, both have the same type of grave. They both have the same type of grave. You can get, you can get a pre premium addition for a car. You can get a luxury edition of the car. You can get a sports package on your car. But there's no such package for the grave. There's no such package. Even if a person buys a $20,000 coffin, at the end of the day, within minutes that's gone. That's why Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, and Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, both of them, it's mentioned that in their final moments before they passed away, they gave advice to those who were around them. And they said that we want to make sure لا تغالوا, do not be extravagant in our shroud. Don't spend too much money in the kafan that you're using. Tomorrow Mufti Harun will be doing the janaza workshop. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. You'll see how the body is shrouded. You'll see that you'll learn about the washing as well. What are they saying? What is Umar Allah anhu, Amir al muminin saying? Don't spend too much money on my kafan. Amir al muminin you're the best of the best. Amir al muminin why would we not want to do so? And he explains. He says because if I am going towards Allah's happiness, then what Allah will grant me as a shroud will be way superior to any shroud you're going to give me. Whatever kafan you're giving me will be zero in comparison to the amazing kafan and cloth Allah has prepared for me in the grave. And Allah forbid if I am headed elsewhere, then this kafan, this cloth, no matter how beautiful it is, will be snatched away from me in no time and I will be put through Allah knows best what. So the, ulam, the Sahaba wa always were focused on the fact is, what's going to happen down there? What's going to happen down there? Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, لو تعلمون ما أعلم ولو تعلمون ما في الآخرة. If you were to be thinking about the hereafter, Subhanallah. He said, if you were to know what I know and you were to be thinking about the hereafter, he said, ما أكلتم على عن شهوة ولا شربتم عن شهوة. You would have never taken a glass of water out of desire. You would have never eaten a morsel of food more than necessary. You would never drink or eat out of desire. You would only eat and drink barely, just enough to survive. The only reason we do everything we're doing. It's because the reality of the grave is not in front of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this dunya is fani and the akhirah is baqi. This worldly life is nothing but amusement and play. Indeed, the ultimate life is the life of the hereafter. My dear friends, let's ask ourselves as fathers and mothers sitting here, what do you wish for your son? What do you desire for your son? Is it that he be a practicing, God-fearing, muttaqi, fajr-praying, tahajr-praying young man and women along with a good job that is enough to get by? Or does a person say that I wish that he arrives at the highest levels of the corporate world and he has the most expensive car, the greatest home on the block. And if he prays Juma, alhamdulillah. If not, Allah ghafoor rahim Allah is ghafoor rahim He prays Juma, no problem. He doesn't pray, at least he recites the kalima. Ask ourselves, what are the type of goals we have for our children? If our goal is that success in the world at all costs, look at the pride that we meet. My son, Ivy League graduate. My other son, second year of residency. Third daughter, subhanAllah, fourth, third year of law school. MashaAllah, how many of these three prayed Fajr in Jama'at today? How many of these, are you sure at university, we're not committing any form of fush? 
How many of these, subhanAllah, have opened up to you what their beliefs are regarding the marriages of the Prophet ﷺ? How many of these have, have genuine conviction that Rasulullah was the best human being and the best creation of Allah? Flawless. No matter what the isms and the ideologies of today say. We are so proud of the material accomplishments of our children. We parade around them as trophies and speak about them so highly. But not once do we think, what's going to happen when this young man goes into the grave? If he dies today in a car accident, how many young men are dying out of overdose? How many of them are being killed? I was yesterday, last week, subhanAllah, last week in a masjid. And the imam told me, after I spoke to him for an hour, and casually on the way out, he told me, oh yeah, last week there's three janazas. I was like, oh, that's a lot. What happened? He's three janas together? Or he said, no, three janas is together. How old were these guys? 18 years old. What happened? Over drugs, they shot up each other. Three 18-year-olds. Three 18-year-old Muslims. SubhanAllah, Janazah was in the same. I, and just imagine what must be going on in that community that the Imam didn't even think about it until the end of one hour conversation. Because that's what's happened. He told me, he said, this is, we have a huge drug problem. I mean, seriously, that can happen to anyone. We are so fixated on making sure that the dunya of our children must be right. And the boys and the girls are also so fixated. When I tell boys and girls, take some time out to spend in the one year, they say, that's going to, that's going to, what? Hold me back. That's going to, that's going to delay my graduation. My dear friend, we're talking about answering the questions of the grave. And you're telling me your graduation. Who cares if you graduate one year later from university? What happens? The sun is not going to stop. The moon is not going to stop. The world will not stop. Why do you think everything is focused around college education? Why do you think everything is focused on that little paper of a four-year degree? If risk was based on that, we would not have MDs who graduate in other foreign countries. Smart people. SubhanAllah, driving cabs today. We've, I've seen them. Not, they, didn't have, they didn't have money for a cab also. They didn't have the ability to drive a cab. A thoracic surgeon, la ilaha illallah. Thoracic surgeon. Just looking out for, you know, basic hand-me-downs. Because the risk is from Allah. We have to understand that we must change our approach to life. Otherwise, we will pay the price as soon as our eyes close. And as soon as we're lowered in the grave, everything will come to light. Uh, what, were these, what were the major foolish decisions we have made? If akhirah is important, we would not send our children unprotected to the other end of the country just because they got entrance into a good university. It's, university is not everything. You know how they say, money is not everything? Brothers, we don't believe it. We just talk. We tell beta, money is not everything. But we actually believe money is everything. If that wasn't the case, we wouldn't throw our kids into universities unprepared. We wouldn't send them, we wouldn't send our daughters to universities and schools far away from home having no idea what's going on. They may be pious, righteous, God-fearing girls, but who is looking at them with what niyyah? I remember, subhanAllah, I was, went to my mother, with my mother, elderly mother, subhanAllah, to the bank some years ago, five, ten years ago. And subhanAllah, the, 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 the banker, just the trashy talk. Oh, you, you know, you're a whatever. Miss Ahmad, you're, what did he say? I don't know. You're a, a you know, a, a, she, she compl he complimented on my mother. And I was enraged. I'm like, my mother's in the 60s at that time. And look at you, that's the way you speak. Now imagine your 18-year-old girl is walking through university. Someone's commenting on her looks from her back. Someone's commenting on her looks of her chest. Someone's commenting on her looks of her head. Someone's commenting on her walk. Someone's commenting on her shoes. Someone's commenting on her skin color. Someone's commenting on her fragrance. La ilaha. How do you handle that? How does your ghayra allow that? That a girl is walking down an aisle and all the men are looking at her. How does a ghayra of a Muslim Accept something of that sort. You know what happens? When we lose your focus in life, then anything and everything is up for grabs. It's all good as long as money comes in. That's the idea. When people sell their soul to this world and sell their soul, instead of buying for akhirah, they buy the dunya, then nothing means anything to them. Haya is out the door. The children didn't randomly lose haya, by the way. The kids, you say, Aajkal ki qom be haya ho gaye. Today's kids have lost haya. Where did they, how did they lose it? They lost it because their parents lost it first. They lost it because their parents didn't emphasize haya. They didn't teach them how to dress properly. They didn't teach the girls or boys how to dress properly. Because it's about, you have to dress presentably. You have to look nice. That's the idea. At all costs, you can wear tights, you can wear leggings, you can wear this and that. As long as you're attractive and the, person, the, the, the boss looks at you and says, you got the job, I'm happy. Who took the haya away from our kids? The parents did. For what? For money. And who's going to pay the price? The moms, dads, and the kids together. Everyone's got to pay the price for the foolish decisions of the parents. 
And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hu anfusakum wa nara. Protect yourself and your family from fire. The fire is such, this is not the fire that's burning for the sisters outside today, the bonfire with wood, and for the brothers yesterday. No. This is the fire of hell that will not use firewood. Allah says, Nas, human flesh. Human flesh is which will make this fire grow, grow. Thousands and millions of degrees more in intensity than this worldly fire. Forever. What's going to run that? The human flesh. Wal hijara and huge massive boulders. My beloved friends, that day, if we want to make sure that doesn't come upon you and I, the Quran is asking us, Allah is asking us to make right decisions. Do not allow the love of this dunya to overtake us to a level where we sell our souls to this dunya at all cost. Because who will pay the price? We will pay the price. After this beautiful example of Surah number, Ayah number 24, Allah Jalla Jalalu then says, Wallahu yad'u ila daris salam. Allah then, what's the solution? Allah says, I invite you. Allah just says, Allah invites you to Darus Salam, to the peace, abode of peace. And he guides to whoever he wishes to the straight path. Dear brothers, the scholars of tafsir have mentioned that Darus Salam is referring to paradise, more than likely. And why has paradise been called Darus Salam? Number one, they say, إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَتْ بِذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ السَّلَامُ هُوَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَالْجَنَّةُ دَارَهُ دَارُهُ He says, a Jannah is that is called Darus Salam because as salam is one of the beautiful names of Allah. And so, Jannah is Allah's abode. Darus Salam, the abode of Allah. Darus Salam, the abode of peace. The abode of tranquility. But who's the actual owner? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, the dunya is also his... But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, dunya mal'oona wa mal'oonan ma fiha. Dunya is cursed and everything in it is cursed. Allah owns it, but He hates it. It's cursed. There's nothing beautiful about it. Illa alimun aw muta'allimun illa dhikrullah aw alimun aw muta'allimun aw ma wala. Four things. The remembrance of Allah or whatever leads you to the remembrance of Allah or a student of knowledge or a scholar. Is that correct? Four things. A scholar, a student of knowledge, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and anything that is connected with it. Besides that, everything else is what? Mal'oon. And what is not mal'oon? What is beloved to Allah? Paradise. That, he says, is my abode, and hence I want to entertain you in my Jannah. Number two, it's mentioned, سُمِّيَتْ بِذَلِكْ لِأَنَّ مَنْ دَخَلَهَا سَلِمَ مِنَ الْآفَاتِ Whoever enters paradise will be salima, will be safe from all difficulties, from all Sicknesses from all diseases. In Nalakum and Tasihu, Fala Tamradu Abada. In Nalakum and Tanamu, Fala Tabasu Abada. In Nalakum and Tahio, Fala Tamutu Abada. In Nalakum and Tashibu, Fala Tahramu Abada. You will live a young life, never to become old. You will live a life of eternity, never to die. You will live a life of health, never to become sick. You will live a life of peace and luxury, never to feel any type of anxiety or stress. Those are the house rules of paradise. And number three, is that Darus Salam has been called in this case Salam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed this place to become a means of reaching the Salam of Allah. Salamun qawlam min rabbir rahim. And Salam, Allah Azza wa says, Udkhuluha bi salamin amineen. Allah Azza wa Jal talks about Salam in Jannah. That you will have angels saying salam. And then you will have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself saying salam. And so Darus Salam is called Jannah, is called Darus Salam because that is where you're going to receive the highest, most amazing thing is, is the greetings, the peace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved friends, what is so amazing? Allah said, Wallahu yad'u. He did not bring the object of yad'u or what we call in Arabic the maf'ul. Allah says, Allah invites to Darus Salam. He didn't say, who is he inviting? He's inviting the Muslims, those who pray, those who fast, those who do tahajjud. No. He kept it blank and open. Allah invites to Darus Salam. Why did he keep it open? Because Allah wants this da'wah to be all-encompassing. Allah is inviting the mushrikeen. You're welcome. Kafar, you're welcome. Atheists, agnostics, Zoroastrians, Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, ex-Muslims, weak Muslims. All of you, repent and come to my paradise. Come to my abode of peace. Come to the place where you receive my salam. 
All of you are welcome to receive this invitation. This is what Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, I'll, I'll end shortly, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned this in the hadith, that the example he gave, that he is a da'i. The Prophet sallallahu said, in a dream, he was shown this example. He said, مَثَلُوا كَمَثْلِ رَجُلٍ بَنَا دَارٍ the Prophet ﷺ was in his dream and the angels approached him. And they said, the example of this man is like a man who built a house and he threw out a beautiful spread, a dinner table. And he sent out an inviter. Whoever accepted the invitation, entered the home and ate from this amazing spread. Whoever, whoever did not accept the call and this, the invite, invitation, لم يدخل الدارة, did not enter this beautiful home, ولم يأكل من المأدبة, and did not eat from this beautiful spread. فقالوا أولوها له يفقها. The angels started talking. They said, now give an interpretation of this vision to him. To who? To Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. so that he may understand it. فقالوا, they said, the angels said, فالدار الجنة. The abode is paradise. والداعي, the inviter, him, he is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَمَنْ أَطَاعَ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهُ Whoever obeyed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has obeyed Allah وَمَنْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهُ uh, And then وَمَنْ عَصَى مُحَمَّدْ Whoever disobeyed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَقَدْ عَصَى اللَّهُ He has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari So this is where this beautiful example comes in And I, I, this, the title of this once again Our talk was the abode of peace and so recently, I was asked after Fajr in Houston, I mean, what was that, Majid Hamza, by a brother, who, this is a question I never get asked, which was a beautiful question. I think so it was Majid Hamza. He said, well, why did you name Darus Salam? What was the name behind the masjid? And so, subhanAllah, that's a very good question. What goes into the name? Now you just heard past 30 minutes for me expressing what goes into the name. That's the reason we have this place called Darus Salam. It's an open invitation to everyone. Muslim, non-Muslim, weak Muslim, strong Muslim, of any background, of any fiqh, of any type of manhaj, this place is a place of peace. You walk in here, and we want you to feel un, you know, the unjudged, not being judged by anyone. You come in as you wish, and you come and you sit, and you listen, and you relax, and you enjoy the peace and the blessings of the angels. Here, you don't get to hear salam, because you're going to get to hear that in akhirah. But most definitely you and I are receiving salams here as well from countless angels. And you're receiving salam from our beautiful students. And you're receiving salam from our beautiful musallis. This is a place, an abode of peace, which is an open invitation to everyone, thousands who drive on North Avenue to say, come on in. Whoever passes by, come on in and experience the serenity and the peace of this place. And the goal is to continue to allow our doors to remain open. Keep the doors open. Let massive groups of people, that scene of paradise, massive large groups of people being taken into paradise. May Allah allow large groups of delegations to enter this Darus Salaam today. As we've witnessed delegations from Atlanta, delegations from Houston, delegations from Las Vegas, delegations from New York, delegations from Pennsylvania, from California, subhanAllah, from Michigan, from all different states that I don't exactly even remember all of them. But maybe 15, 20, 25 states. These delegations, 40, 50, 60 are coming in. Our hope is that in such great numbers, in millions of times larger than that, we will be entering as delegates into Jannah. Say inshaAllah. And those of you who brought your communities with you, I know Imams here were about 45, 50 people from their masjid. You will inshallah be front holding the flag and behind you will be thousands of people inshallah as you enter paradise. That is what this place is supposed to be about. A place of peace and serenity. It's one step towards the final destination of Jannah. On your way out, the main entrance, the arches there, you will see this ayah written there. And that's exactly what, it meant, what it's meant to be. That we want you all to make this place your home. Your abode, stay connected, get peace from here, take peace from here, become ambassadors of the peace that you find here. Take it back to your own localities, to your own masajid, to your own workplaces, and to your own homes. Take it to your spouses, take it to your children, take it to your parents. Whatever you've gained here in this weekend, whatever you'll gain in the remaining speeches, take this back, preserve it, protect it, take it back to your areas, and create this ripple effect. A ripple effect that the salam that is being presented here must be taken to all four corners of the world. And we cannot rest. We may not rest. We shall not rest until this salam is, gets into 
every single home. As Rasulullah Sallallahu said, that this day will come, that every single home, Islam will enter, بِعِزِّ Aziz أَوْ ذِلِّ ذَلِيل Whether by honoring someone, or someone will get dishonored on the way, but Islam must enter, wherever the sun rises and wherever the sun sets. And so take Islam with salam. Take submission with peace, in a most beautiful manner. Package it beautifully, present it beautifully, and make it something that people can accept, that people can take, that people can appreciate. And you and I, inshaAllah, Nabi Ali Wasallam said, that I am going to be waiting for you at the Hawd. And inshaAllah, we should all have this hope that we are going to be meeting Rasulullah at the Hawd Kawthar, inshaAllah, tomorrow. And with him, we will be entering into the highest levels of Jannah al Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our du'as come true, our dreams come true, and whatever intentions we're all making here, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to, uh, to re receive much, much more than that as well. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Takbir. 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 Inshallah, we'll give that then right now, and then after five minutes, we'll have salah. And then afterwards, inshallah, there will be a short dhikr session. And dua. Jazakallah khair. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة على الصلاة حي على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Please make sure your lines are straight and your phones are turned off and you're standing shoulder to shoulder. Jazakumullah khira. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون الله
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we have a beautiful environment here almost like the ختم القرآن it seems like MashaAllah, the whole courtyard, the whole downstairs, all the lobbies, everything is filled up, MashaAllah. And Alhamdulillah, uh, it's, I'm told that you know, every single space in the parking lot has all been taken. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to continue to grant qubuliyah and acceptance to these events and allow you all to continue to come uh, and attend in great numbers. I, we have for the remainder of the program, very short now. After sunnah, we'll have salawat, we'll recite the salutations of the Prophet we'll do some dhikr, meditation, and end with a dua. But before we break for sunnah, uh, I want to take five minutes from all of you here, inshallah. This, the strategy and the method for the past seven years for our retreats has been that we offer these retreats at absolutely no cost when we advertise it and we market it and we ask brothers to come. And the goal of it is that there are so many people who might just get turned off by $20 fee, $50 fee, which is not much. But that becomes an excuse for shaitan to say, ah man, why should you pay for that? So the, the idea is, alhamdulillah, we try to provide all the meals and everything here to everyone at our, you know, for free. And then we you spend five minutes to seven minutes after one of the salahs to request the brothers and sisters who are joining here to help cover the cost of the food and the expenses. Now just one year ago, the, what the gas price was, is exactly a year later, it's double. Mil milk has doubled, eggs have doubled, everything has doubled, you all know that. So Alhamdulillah, we've been feeding about between 1,500 to 2,000 plus people per meals. All our breakfast, Alhamdulillah, Allah reward that individual immensely, he has sponsored all the breakfast. Alhamdulillah for everyone, may Allah bless him and reward him in all his efforts, and increase him in his health and his wealth, subhanAllah, and everything that he does for this institution. Saturday, uh, Monday lunch also, one brother is not only sponsoring it, but he's actually cooking and bringing it. Jazahullah khairu ahsanu khairu jaza. Now we have four meals, all right? Today's two, set, lunch and dinner. And we have, we don't, you know, chai tea burgers. You go buy it yourself, $9 plus or whatever. Alhamdulillah, huh? What is it? 12? Oh, subhanAllah. Okay, <laughs> someone has a lot of experience, huh? <laughs> so, so alhamdulillah. And then we have anmol and we have biryani. Everyone, I know all of you enjoyed the food, right? And tomorrow as well. So this doesn't come without a, without a cost. Just the food cost for these four meals is $36,000. We're talking about, just do the math. You're doing 2,000 people being fed. That's about 8,000 people at least being fed within these four meals. 
Right? So when it comes to the dollar amount, it's still quite less than when we throw a big walima or whatever the case may be. Second thing, we have our printing cost for all the material. That's about $5,000. We have about seven to eight speakers who have come in from different parts of the country. And that is also obviously, uh, ticket prices right now are just unbelievable. So we are asking all of the brothers here, to, it's 10.38, within six minutes inshallah, let us all donate generously to cover the cost. I'm going to keep it very simple, short and sweet. So first of all, the meals, let's take care of that. There's $9,000 per meal. There's four meals. There may be some of us who can take one meal. Some of us maybe will take half a meal. I'm going to ask inshallah, is there anyone who would like to take responsibility of feeding this entire crowd for one meal? Which is cost of $9,000 of sadaqah to be, a, 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 for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are feeding 2,000 plus individuals, men, women, children from the entire United States. Do we have any brother or sister? Ma mashallah. Takbir. One, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this sadaqah jariyah for your children, for your family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove any and all difficulties in your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you siha and afiyah. Gee, do you have a number two, inshallah? $9,000 for one meal. $9,000 for another meal. Do we have any individual brother or sister who would like to take responsibility of one meal? Anyone here, inshallah? In the back hall, in the courtyard, side halls, or you can text message us or the masjid number. Do we have anyone here, inshallah? One more person to take a meal of feeding. People love to feed in Ramadan. Brothers, we, we can, we, it's not like we only get hungry in Ramadan and after that we don't. Right? You're feeding students of knowledge who have come. Some brothers I found out came on a 48-hour train ride here. Some brothers came on a 30-hour bus drive here. It's unbelievable what sacrifices people have done. So feeding these people, alhamdulillah, is going to be a great reward. Do you have any other person? Do you have another brother who would like to uh, take responsibility for one meal? Okay, inshallah, let's split it up. 4,500 and two brothers for 4,500. Do we have, can we have two individuals, inshallah, to take care of one of the meals? $4,500. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَنفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ Whatever you give in Allah's path, Allah will replace it. Allah will definitely replace this with much, much more. May I request, inshallah, two brothers here. Uh, one, mashallah. Two, Allah will takbir. May Allah keep you together in Jannah. Say Ameen. May Allah take these two neighbors and make them the neighbors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say Ameen. Alhamdulillah, that's two meals down. Do we have a number? Let's get another two brothers or two sisters, right? Or two friends who say, inshallah, we'll pitch in together and take one meal. Come on, inshallah. Who else here, inshallah? We have, oh, mashallah, one brother messaged me. Takbir. He's taking a third meal. All right, alhamdulillah. May Allah make this a means of your children being connected to this masjid. Say, ameen. May Allah make it a means of putting barakah in his health and his wealth. And he has made niyyah for his business. May Allah put, allow that to come to fruition. Last meal we have, inshallah. Do we have uh, two individuals or one individual who would like to take responsibility? Two people together to take the fourth and last meal. Yes, brothers, inshallah. Who here would like to take responsibility? All right. In, anyone here? Inshallah. Two brothers. I have, I'm going to get to the smaller number. Security, printing costs, tickets of our scholars. I'll cover that. Those will be $1,000 increments. But I just, I just got one more meal. Can we have, inshallah, two individuals? Uh, this is the time for the sisters to... Oh my God, mashallah. One brother, a student from out of state came here to attend. Allahu Akbar. He says he wants to take the fourth half of it. Takbir. May Allah facilitate for him to join the one-year program. Say Ameen. May Allah facilitate for him to become a student of knowledge full time. Say Ameen. Alhamdulillah. Now another half. And may Allah grant him his better half. Say Ameen. All right. And who is the second brother or sister for that matter who would like to take, that, take care of this last half of the meal? 4,500 inshallah to cover the last half. Do we have any brother or sister here who would like to, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, take responsibility? Yes. Uh, okay, yes, I understand. Actually, the first brother, I'm, there was a miscalculation. So in the first meal, mashallah, there was over here waiting. From 9,000, it was actually 2,500. So we have uh, 6,500 left. 65 plus 45, that's what, 11? All right, 11. 11 K left. We'll do single digits for $1,000. Can we have 11 people for $1,000 towards the food expenses? All right, one, mashallah, takbir. Two, Zakhmal Takbir. Three, four, five, six, seven. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Eight, right. Eight, nine, mashallah. Ten, last for the food. Last one for the food. Mashallah, eleven. Takbir. All right, mashallah. Keep it going. For all our printed material, I need five more guys for a thousand. Five more brothers, inshallah, for a thousand. Let's who else here? For five more brothers for a thousand dollars. For our printed material. Yes, anyone else here? Let's get the five more brothers for a thousand dollars. Where's the first one? Inshallah. First one. Who is the first one here to, to be going towards the expenses of the fly? Yes, mashallah. One. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. SubhanAllah. May Allah facilitate for your summer intensive that you are wanting to do. Say Ameen. All right. Do I have a number? Who else, inshallah? I need four more brothers. Four more students, inshallah, to take care of the $1,000 each. 
Who else do we have here? Yes, any more? Four more brothers, inshallah. Anyone in the lobby? Anyone? In the, yes, mashallah. Takbir. Mashallah. May Allah facilitate for Hafiz Sahab, our student. Mashallah, in sixth year, may Allah put barakah and grant him health and shifa and allow him to continue in his studies. Three more. Three, three more brothers for a thousand apiece. You can quick pay, you can zell, you can pay it on your credit card. Check. Three more brothers, inshallah. Who else for a for thousand dollars? Okay, well, mashallah, one more. Takbir. May Allah reward you, may Allah bless you. Two more. Two more, inshallah. Who else? Who else here is, mashallah, takbir, brother Mubin there. Okay. Mashallah, one more there. Takbir. Allah, we're youngster there. Alhamdulillah. Okay, brothers, for the security of the park, for this whole event, is $2,000. Can I have two people, inshallah, that hired another? You want to give again for this? Mashallah, takbir. Allahu Akbar. He did for the food. One more there. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Now I need 10 brothers. Sorry again. This is not sorry. I'm not going to say sorry. You're getting an opportunity to be a benefit to this whole crowd. The ulama that are visiting, about 10 ulama's tickets were purchased to be here today. So I need, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, who is ready to give $1,000 towards the expenses of our tickets? Is that you again? MashaAllah, one. Who else? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Two. MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. Who else? Who else? Raise your hand. Keep your hands high, inshallah. If you, three. MashaAllah, takbir. Who else? Brothers, if you want to give 500, also raise your hand. MashaAllah, four. Five. Keep your hands high for any amount. Six. Right? Any amount. I'm saying 250, 200, whatever. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, who else? There's 11, mashallah. My sister's giving $1,000. Takbir, mashallah. Yeah, 12, 13, 14. Do you keep your hands high? Keep your hands high. So these brothers can give you pledge cards. There's 14 people. Let's get a few more brothers, inshallah. Any amount for the, the tickets and the gifts for our visiting guests. Who else, inshallah? Raise your hand, brother. Who else, mashallah? All right, what number was I on? 11. Yes, where else? 12. Okay, where else? Where else, where else? 13. Mashallah. Who else? 14, Jazakumullah khaira. Yes. Who else, inshallah? 15. All right, who else? Who else, inshallah? 16, 17, alhamdulillah, mashallah. All right, let's get five more till 21. All right, 18, come on, 18, 19, 20, 21. Any amount, 18, 19. All right, two more, any amount, inshallah. Who would like to give any amount? Two more brothers. Two more individuals would like to give any amount, inshallah. 20, 21, mashallah, look at these, so many 21s. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Okay, just keep your hands high. And these brothers, here, here. Do, Ammar, do you have some pledge cards? Right? Some pledge cards, just give it to the brothers over here. Oh. Okay, now if you want to pay, a quick pay Zell, donate at masjidds.org. Donate at masjidds.org. That's the best way. There's no credit card fees. Um, and uh, uh, by the way, if someone wants to give stock because it's really falling, <laughs> you're hoping it'll go up. Alhamdulillah, you can give stock as well. Maybe Google stock will be just a 500. I'm not sure what's there right now. Right? So if you want to give by stock, you can contact the office and donate stock. You can give by credit card, you can give by check, you can give by Zelle. And there's kiosks in the back, you can donate over there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all those who participated in our fundraising drive toward the retreat expenses. May Allah get the ajr of all 10,000, 8,000 or however many meals were served. Say ameen. And may Allah get, allow them to get the ajr of all the lives that they are witnessing here being changed. Say ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to take back from this retreat way more than they have ever expected. Say ameen. And may Allah grant them the ajr of all the repentance and the tawbah that everyone is doing here. Say ameen. Inshallah, we'll pray our sunnah. And then after that, we will conclude with dhikr and dua. Jazakumullah khaira.
Inshallah, we'll have uh, our beloved student, Muhannad, uh, who, uh, who's where are you now from? He keeps on changing. He was in uh, Minnesota now, moved to? You moved somewhere else now? Or in Minnesota? Okay, now in Chicago, okay. All over, mashallah. Him and his, his brother are two amazing Egyptian students, alhamdulillah, uh, who are here. See, he's in the third year. And uh, he will be, inshallah, sharing and rendering some beautiful poetry. Uh, soften the hearts, increase the love for Rasulullah in our hearts. Then we will uh, recite the 40 salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And then we'll do some dhikr, some meditation, and end the night with dua. I request the brothers, I know it's long, but this is going to be, inshallah, the best part of the night. Just make a little sabr, come inside, inshallah, and then we will enjoy chai and snacks, everything. Hopefully there's still some leftovers in the canteen. We'll enjoy it outside afterwards. It's a beautiful night. So um, let's, let's, come, let's come close, inshallah, and enjoy this final part of the program. Bidhinillah ta'ala. والدين سلام يا رايح للحرم ودعيني وسلم لي على هذه الأمم والديني سلام يا رايح للحرم ودعيني وسلم لي على هذه الأمم وانظر للكعب يا محلاها نور وجمال يخشاها انظر للكعب يا محلاها نور وجمال يخشاها احرسها ربي ويرعاها واذكرني امامها وادعيني ودعيني هنيئا هنيئا يا رايح للهادي غرام شغالني ملاك كل فؤادي هنيئا هنيئا يا رايح للهادي غرام شغالني ملاك كل فؤادي ادخل من باب السلام بتأدب واحترام ادخل من باب السلام بتأدب واحترام سلم على طه التهام واسأله شفاعة ودعيني ودعيني وديني سلامي يا رايح للحرم ودعيني وسلم لي على هذه الأمم وديني سلامي يا رايح للحرم ودعيني وسلم لي على هذه الأمم انظر للكعب يا محلاها نور وجمال يخشاها انظر للكعب يا محلاها نور وجمال يخشاها احرسها ربي ويرعاها واذكرني أمامها وادعيني ودعيني يا ساعي بهم من, من صافى للمروى يا شارب من زمزم الذكر نبدعوى يا ساعي بهم من, من صافى للمروى يا شارب من زمزم الذكر نبدعوى يا طالع على جبل الرحمة يا ماشي في وسط الزحمة يا طالع على جبل الرحمة يا ماشي في وسط الزحمة اطلب من مولانا الرحمة واسأله شفاعة ودعيني ودعيني وديني سلامي يا رايح للحرم ودعيني وسلم لي على هذه الأمم وديني سلامي يا رايح للحرم ودعيني وسلم لي على هذه الأمم 
انظر للكعب يا محلاها نور وجمال يخشاها انظر للكعب يا محلاها نور وجمال يخشاها احرسها ربي ويرعاها واذكرني أمامها ودعيني ودعيني Inshallah, next we'll have a, we'll have a uh, majlis of sending salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We do this uh, every Thursday night over here. Uh, since the masjid opened, alhamdulillah, this was done in our madrasa, Darulum Zakaria, also every Thursday night. And it's, it's a, a practice in many madaris <coughs> and, and the khanqahs um, of our mashayikh to spend uh, Thursday nights to recite salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So no majlis is complete. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, that any gathering in which salutation upon the Prophet ﷺ is not sent, it will be a burden upon that person on the Day of Judgment. So every gathering we need to remember Allah and send salutations. So inshallah, Muhammad Farhan Sharif will recite the salutations. We can all follow along with the screens. The books, here, can you show me the book? Is available uh, in the bookstore as well. Uh, this has got the translation and transliteration. It's a beautiful copy. Um, it's translation, translation, transliteration, and the Arabic as well. You could get it from the bookstore amongst other beautiful, great books that they have available. Inshallah. So let's follow along. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Salamun ala ibadihi al-ladhin as-tafa. Salamun ala al-mursaleen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin wa anzilhu al-maqa'ad al-muqarraba indak. Allahumma rabba hadhihi al-da'wati al-qa'imati wa al-salati al-nafi'ati salli ala Muhammadin wa arda'anni rida la tashkhatu ba'dahu abada. اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد وارحم محمدا وآل محمد كما صليت وباركت ورحمت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد النبي وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وذريته وأهل بيته كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وترحم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما ما ترحمت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ترحم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما ترحمت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم تحنن على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما تحننت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم سلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما سلمت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وارحم محمدا وآل محمد كما صليت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وبارك على محمد النبي الأمي كما باركت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد صلاة تكون لك رضا وله جزاء ولحقه أداء وأعطه الوسيلة والفضيلة والمقام المحمود الذي وعدته وجزه عنا ما هو أهله وجزه أفضل ما جازيت نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته وصل على جميع إخوانه من النبيين والصالحين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آل محمد كما صليت 
على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أهل بيته كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل علينا معهم اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى أهل بيته كما باركت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك علينا معهم صلوات الله وصلوات المؤمنين على محمد النبي الأمي اللهم اجعل صلواتك ورحمتك وبركاتك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما جعلتها على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وصلى الله على النبي الأمي التحيات لله والصلوات والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله التحيات الطيبات الصلوات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله التحيات لله الطيبات الصلوات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله التحيات المباركات الصلوات الطيبات لله سلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته سلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بسم الله وبالله التحيات لله والصلوات والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أسأل الله الجنة وأعوذ بالله من النار التحيات لله الزاكيات لله الطيبات الصلوات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بسم الله وبالله خير الأسماء التحيات الطيبات الصلوات لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وأن الساعة آتية لا ريب فيها السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين اللهم اغفر لي واهدني التحيات الطيبات والصلوات والملك لله السلام عليك أيها أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله التحيات لله الصلوات لله الزاكيات لله السلام على النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين شهدت أن لا إله إلا الله شهدت أن محمد رسول الله 
التحيات الطيبات الصلوات الزاكيات لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين التحيات الطيبات الصلوات الزاكيات لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين التحيات الصلوات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين التحيات لله الصلوات الطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله التحيات المباركات الصلوات الطيبات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله بسم الله والسلام على رسول الله Make some thicker, inshallah. Before starting, let us all. Recite Surah Ikhlas 11 times with the intention to send the thawab to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as all the marhumin who have passed away. Allah, please accept our recitation of Surah Ikhlas and send the thawab to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as all of the marhumin who have passed away with the intention of seeking istighfar and tawbah and repenting for all of our major and minor sins let us make istighfar 11 times Astaghfirullah With the intention of attaining spiritual sustenance let us take the name of Allah Ya Basitu 11 times Let's recite the du'as of dhikr. Allahumma iftah. Aqfala qulubina. Bi dhikrik. Wa atmim alayna. Ni'matak. Wa asbigh alayna. Min fadlik. Wa ja'alna. Min ibadika salihin. Allahumma iftah. Masami' qulubina. Bi dhikrik. Wa ruzuqna. طاعتك وطاعة رسولك وعملا بكتابك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم 
طهر قلبي عن غيرك ونور قلبي بنور معرفتك أبدا يا الله يا الله يا الله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أفضل الذكر لا إله إلا الله 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 
لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Inshallah, we'll do a, a silent form of dhikr. And everyone can try their best to remain absolutely silent and still. And inshallah, we focus on our heart. The heart is taking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. And as the heart is beating with the love of Allah, and imagine a heart is saying, Allah, 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 Allah. Spend a couple of minutes quietly, inshallah, focusing on the heart, saying Allah's name. Focus on the fact that we're sitting here for the, for the past many hours in this gathering. SubhanAllah, for many of us, for some of us, a day and a half already, two days in the masjid, in the house of Allah, in Atikaf, surrounded by, inshallah, millions of angels. All day we've been listening to just talks of Allah and His Rasul and Akhirah. So obviously we are enshrouded in the mercy of Allah, but we have to many times focus and ponder over this aspect. So this is, there are many types of meditations and many types of muraqaba. And one is the muraqaba of rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we simply focus that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down His fayd, His rahmah, His mercy upon our hearts. So there's focus that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering upon our filthy, dirty, blackened hearts His special mercy. As it splashes onto our heart all the evil effects of our sins, the evil effects of our nafs, the evil effects of shaitan, and all the locks that have come upon our hearts due to our own sins and mistakes are being broken and our heart is becoming enlightened through the nur of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending upon it.
let's, let's end the night with duha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma laka alhamdu daiman ma'a dawamik wa laka alhamdu hamdan khalidan ma'a al-khuludik wa laka alhamdu hamdan hatta atarda wa laka alhamdu hamdan idha radid. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zanat arshi wa midada kalimati. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بعلمك واستعمل أبداننا لطاعتك اللهم يا حي يا قيوم يا حي يا قيوم يا أحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأحوال والآفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفع فعنا بها عندك على درجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة بعد الممات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أفرق علينا الصبر وتوفنا مسلمين ربنا أفرق علينا الصبر وتوفنا مسلمين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للقوم الظالمين ونجنا برحمتك من القوم الكافرين ونجنا برحمتك من القوم الكافرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل على الله توكلنا حسبنا الله لما أهمنا حسب الله حسبنا الله لمن بقى علينا حسبنا الله لمن حسدنا حسبنا الله لمن كادنا بسوء حسبنا الله عند الموت حسبنا الله عند السؤال في القبر حسبنا الله عند الميزان حسبنا الله عند الصراط حسبنا الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلنا وهو رب العرش العظيم اللهم يا حي يا قيوم إننا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء وشفاء من كل داء وشفاء من كل داء اللهم إننا نسألك رضاك والجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من صختك والنار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل اللهم افتح قفال قلوبنا بذكرك اللهم افتح قفال قلوبنا بذكرك اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان واشرح صدورنا للإسلام اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا وانصرنا على من عادنا وعد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم اجمع كلمة مع الحق المبين اللهم احفظنا اللهم احفظ الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين وعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سببا وسبينا لمن اهتدى ولا تجعلنا سببا لمن ضل وغوى اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وانثانا اللهم نحييتم منا فاحيا على الإسلام ومن توفيتم منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم اشفنا واشفي مرضانا مرض المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين وانصر المستضعفين من المسلمين في كل مكان Oh Allah, we ask you to accept our, this gathering from the beginning till end. Oh Allah, we ask you to accept every component, every aspect of this gathering, every individual who has any way, shape or form been connected to this gathering in the slightest way. Ya Allah, we ask you to make him or her from amongst the accepted ones. Oh Allah, we ask you to allow all to be able to fully benefit from the faith and the blessings of this gathering. Oh Allah, those who passed away and facilitated this program, they facilitated this building, they facilitated all of us to be present here, they facilitated our education, they facilitated our journey. Journeys. Oh Allah, whoever in the past has become a means of allowing this gathering to happen, be it our teachers, be it our elders, be it our parents, be it the supporters and the patrons of this madrasa and this masjid, oh Allah, whether they're alive or they have passed away, allow them to get the full sadaqa jariya of this event, ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow them to get full benefit of this event, ya Allah. Oh Allah, whatever khair and barakah is here, allow it to be spread out throughout the globe, ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow every single person who is in their graves, allow them to benefit from this gathering, ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow this sadaqa to be given to all our previous Muslims who have passed away from this ummah, ya Allah. Starting from Rasulullah sallallahu all the way till, till the last person who's passed away most recently, ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, to allow us when we pass away, allow people to remember us as well, ya Allah. And allow them to send gifts for us in our graves, ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow them to send sadaqah jariyah for us in our graves, ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, do not allow any one of us to still leave this gathering except in a state that our sins have been forgiven. Oh Allah, our sins have been forgiven. Oh Allah, our sins have been replaced with good deeds. Oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, all those who are, who are here or outside in the parking lot or anywhere or other a part of this institution and this campus are, are involved in any way, shape, or form or in, are simply enjoying the evening here. Oh Allah, do not allow anyone to be deprived of the blessings of this gathering. Oh Allah, no matter how less or how much they sat. Oh Allah, no matter how much they listened to or how less they listened to. Ya Allah, make this, this, is, make this such a gathering. La yashqa bihim jalis. That no one who sits with them will ever be, remain wretched. Oh Allah, allow every single person to walk away in your happiness. With your pleasure. 
Allow them to all go back home enshrouded with your mercy. O oh Allah, allow us all to collectively repent from all our major and minor sins. O oh Allah, allow us to collectively repent from our major and minor sins. O oh Allah, from the sins of looking at haram, touching haram, thinking of haram, eating haram, consuming haram, spending in haram, earning from haram. O oh Allah, walking towards haram. Ya Allah, touching haram. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, in any way, shape, or form that our life has been connected to any aspect of, of the deen in which you did not like what we did. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, we ask you to grant us the tawfiq to realize our mistake and repent from it, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, grant us the ability to truly repent from all of our major and minor sins, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, allow us to lead such lives that will become a means of you, Ya Allah, enshrouding us with your mercy, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, allow us to follow in the footsteps of our beloved Prophet ﷺ. O oh Allah, allow us to understand the Qur'an the way the earliest Sahaba understood the Qur'an. Allow us to follow the deen the way it was pristine, pristinely saved and, 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 and preserved and protected and passed down. O oh Allah, save us from following a tainted deen. Save us from following a deformed deen. Save us from becoming from amongst those who taint and deform the deen. Or follow any type of amends or changes to the deen. O oh Allah, save us from any and all innovations of the deen. O oh Allah, grant us all strong yaqeen and la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. O oh Allah, grant us strong yaqeen and la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. O oh Allah, strengthen our level of tawheed. Strengthen our level of tawakkul. Strengthen our level of ikhlas. O oh Allah, strengthen our level of istikhlas. Strengthen our level of ya Allah zuhud. O oh Allah, strengthen our level of ya Allah reliance upon you. Uh, strengthen our level, Ya Allah, of belief in the hereafter. Strengthen our level of connection with you. O Allah, strengthen our level of connection with your Nabi Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Strengthen our love for his Sahaba, for his family in the mashayikh of the past and the present, Ya Allah. O Allah, we ask you to allow us to love that which you want us to love. And allow us hate, to hate that which you want us to hate. O Allah, allow our relationships with our parents, with our spouses, with our siblings, with our children to become sincere. O Allah, allow all of our, our relationships to become sincere. O Allah, allow us to love whoever we love only for your sake. And O oh Allah, whoever we distance ourselves from, allow us to distance ourselves from them only for your sake. O oh Allah, grant us all ikhlas in our relationships. O oh Allah, grant us ikhlas in our relationships, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, grant us the quality in our salah, quality in our dua, quality in our sajda, quality in our ruku', quality in our tilawa, quality in our qiyam. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, grant us the salah of the sahaba, salah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, make it easy for us to pray salah in the masjid regularly. Make it easy from, for us to pray salah with takbiratul awula from the very get-go, from the very beginning of salah, make it easy and facilitate for us to join the salah. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, save us from, Ya Allah, neglecting salah in the masjid. Save us from, Ya Allah, sleeping through salah or missing salah, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, make our salah powerful. O oh Allah, make our salah such that when we pray it, it reaches your throne, it shakes your throne. O oh Allah, when we pray salah and raise our hands, make it such that millions of angels, Ya Allah, are affected by the power of our dua. O oh Allah, and that are begging on our behalf that you grant us what we're asking for. O oh Allah, make our dua such so powerful that it sends vibrations in the heavens. Ya Allah. Oh Allah, make our dua such powerful and with such conviction that we ask you that we know that before we put our hands down, our needs will be fulfilled. Our duas will be accepted. Oh Allah, allow us to make dua with yaqeen that our duas will be accepted. Oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, to grant us the ability to become remain and become students of knowledge. Oh Allah, for the rest of our life, allow us to become students of knowledge. Oh Allah, oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, to accept all of us and our children to remain to become students of knowledge. Oh Allah, all the madrasa students of any way, any, any type of program, Sunday school, school, tafheem, tanweer, tadris, takmeel, tahfib, O Allah, and the takhassus, O Allah, past, present, future students, Ya Allah, O Allah, we ask you to grant them all qabuli and acceptance, make them all ulama rabbaniyin, make them amongst those who walk with, uh, with the Quran, and live with the Quran, die with the Quran, make them such, Ya Allah, when they walk, the hidayah spreads, when they sleep, hidayah spreads, when they talk, hidayah spreads, O Allah, make our men and women graduating ulama in the next month, allow them to become beacons of guidance and hidayah for humanity, O Allah, our previous graduates from all of our programs, O Allah, allow them to remain strong beacons of guidance. O oh Allah, all the Maktab and Hif students, Ya Allah, of the past decade, O oh Allah, allow them, Ya Allah, to become beacons of guidance and hidayah. O oh Allah, all those who attended this retreat, O oh Allah, allow every single one of them and their loved ones to become students of knowledge. Allow all of them to become students of knowledge for the rest of their lives. O oh Allah, grant us the ability to keep our tongues moist in your remembrance. Grant us such hearts that beat with your love. O oh Allah, allow us to make vicar with our tongue, with our heart, with our eyes, with our hands. O oh Allah, allow us to always remain in the state of vicar, Ya Allah. Allah. Allow us to fast abundantly. Allow us to recite Quran abundantly. Allow us to take our time and pray tahajjud every night. Allow us to pray our salah on time. Allow us to spend some time in seclusion making dua to you every day. O oh Allah, bless us all with munajat. Bless all of us with the ability to cry to you and to share our problems with you. O oh Allah, to pour our hearts in front of you. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, we ask you to grant all of us that level of connection with you that we can open up and share everything that's on our mind, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to grant all of us the akhlaq of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
Oh Allah, make us the best husbands, the best wives, the best sons, the best daughters, the best fathers, the best mothers. Oh Allah, the best son-in-laws, the best daughter-in-laws, the best neighbors, the best business partners. Oh Allah, in every single relationship, allow our akhlaq to be outstanding. Oh Allah, Muslims and non-Muslims to get guidance through our character. Oh Allah, please allow us to understand and focus on our, on our character flaws. Allow us to see our character flaws. Allow us to openly see our character flaws. And allow us to make an effort to improve on them. Oh Allah, we ask you Allah to grant us the ability to have absolutely highest levels of ikhlas, highest levels of sincerity. And oh Allah, save us for even one moment to think of ourselves to be from amongst the sincere people. Oh Allah, save us from ever considering ourselves to be sincere. Allow us always to continuously doubt our sincerity. Allow us to always be worried about our sincerity. Allow us always to be worried about sincerity. Ya Allah, save us from ever thinking that we're sincere. Oh Allah, save us from ever thinking that we're sincere. But at the same time, continue to make us sincere. Continue to make us sincere. Oh Allah, we ask you Allah whatever health and wealth children assets that we have indeed it only belongs to you oh Allah allow us to utilize all the gifts that you have given us for the service of deen oh Allah oh Allah we ask you to allow us to use it for the service of deen oh Allah we ask you Allah to grant us and our youth and our adults a life of chastity oh Allah a life of protection from sin oh Allah oh Allah all of those who are unmarried make it easy for them to find the very best and righteous of spouses oh Allah allow them to find such, find such spouses who will allow them to taste the sweetness of paradise in this world. O oh Allah, allow them to find such spouses that will push them and propel them towards the deen. Propel them towards akhirah. Propel them towards you. Propel them towards the sunnah of the Prophet O oh Allah, save us from such spouses that will pull us down and that will push away, push us away from the akhirah. Push us away from you that will only make us into materialistic individuals. Ya Allah, save us from such spouses, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, for those who are married, grant mahabba and love between the spouses. O oh Allah, do not allow shaitan to play tricks with us. O oh Allah, there are many spouses Many, 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 many marriages that are on the verge of breaking. Many, many marriages that are on the verge of breaking have broken recently. Oh Allah, oh Allah, we ask you to have mercy on the marriages of our community. Oh Allah, we ask you to have mercy on our relationships of our community. Oh Allah, the shaitan is working full time, overtime with all his cronies to destroy our marriages. Oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, to grant us the foresight, the ability to understand and see the tricks and the ploys of shaitan. Oh Allah, grant all of us that sixth sense. Grant us that new of the heart where we can clearly see from miles away before shaitan attacks us and before shaitan attacks our marriages before he attacks our children before he attacks our prayer before he attacks our sincerity before he attacks our character O oh Allah allow us to sniff out shaitan allow us to understand the plots and the ploys of shaitan O oh Allah please save us from falling prey to his tricks O oh Allah none can make us aware and alert of his tricks besides you O oh Allah I beg you to grant all of us the ability to, to understand his plots and plans. Oh Allah, no matter how many layers of deception he puts upon his plans, no matter how many layers of protection he puts over his plans, oh Allah, you're the only one who can tear those layers of protection. You're the only one who can remove those layers of protection. You're the only one who can lay him bare. O oh Allah, lay, lay shaitan bare in front of us. Allow us to see the plans of Iblis that he is planning against us before our creation. O oh Allah, allow us to fully, fully understand and see the plots and plans that Iblis has, is working on for any one of us, Ya Allah. And allow us then to take the proper steps to protect ourselves from it, Ya Allah. Allow us to take the proper steps to protect ourselves from it. O oh Allah, make those plots and plans a failure. O oh Allah, destroy his plans, O oh Allah. Allah mina na'udhu bikam an iblisa wa junudi. Allah mina na'udhu bikam an iblisa wa junudi. Allah mina na'udhu bikam an iblisa wa junudi. Allah mina na'udhu bikam an sharr shaytani wa shirki. Allah mina na'udhu bikam an sharr shaytani wa shirki. O oh Allah, we ask you to grant us complete protection from the nafs and the shaytan. O oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, to strengthen our the marriages. O oh Allah, allow husbands and wives to keep deen as a priority in their marriage, sunnah as a, as a priority in the marriage. O oh Allah, all of those marriages that are taking place this weekend, hundreds of marriages across the country and beyond. O oh Allah, we ask you to allow those marriages to be according to the sunnah of the Prophet O oh Allah, save those marriages from, from becoming a means of bringing your wrath upon them due to them being neglected, to, due to them neglecting your commands and the, and the sunnah of the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O oh Allah, we ask you, Allah, allow husbands and wives to turn to you together and to beg you of your mercy, ya Allah, to save their marriages. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, we are suffering dearly in this, immensely in this regard. O oh Allah, allow both husbands and wives to understand that no one will be happy 
through separation besides Iblis. And no, and the ones who will suffer will the most will be their children and themselves. Ya Allah, allow the parents and the husbands and wives to understand the price that they're going to pay in terms of losing their kids. O oh Allah, as young, loving, caring, married couples are having such a hard time raising their kids. In this country, it's, it's so difficult for single parents to raise their children properly. O oh Allah, allow the parents to see all of this. Allow them to understand this. Allow them to simply remain patient with one another in order to save their progeny. Allah. Oh Allah, we ask you Allah to protect our youth in the universities and high schools and colleges. Oh Allah, protect them from falling into sin. Protect our sons and daughters from falling into sin. Oh Allah, we ask you, make sin repugnant to us. Oh Allah, especially the sin of looking at haram. Oh Allah, strengthen our community to shun this sin. Oh Allah, strengthen our community to shun this sin. Grant the community the willpower to be away from this sin. Oh Allah, this sin is the pandemic of our era. Oh Allah, protect our gaze from looking at haram. Oh Allah, protect our gazes from looking at haram. Haram. Oh Allah, protect our gazes from looking at haram. Oh Allah, purify our eyes and our ears from all the haram they have witnessed, from all the haram they have heard, from all the haram they have tasted, the, all the haram they have eaten. Oh Allah, purify every organ of our body. Oh Allah, we ask you to grant rahmah and mercy to the entire Ummah Muhammadiyah. Oh Allah, unite the Ummah wherever they may be. Oh Allah, end the suffering of those who are going through difficulty. Make their suffering a means of their forgiveness. Oh Allah, make their suffering a means of them becoming close to you. Oh Allah, we ask you to spread hidayah throughout the entire globe. Oh Allah, grant us the ability to remain firm on the truth. Allow us to practice the truth. Invite the truth. Live by the truth and die by the truth. O oh Allah, make us from amongst the people of the truth. O oh Allah, make us from amongst the ta'ifa mansura. Make us from amongst the, that group that will be assisted at all times. O oh Allah, that group that will never la yadurruhum and khadaluhum. That they will never be harmed by, no, by anyone who forsakes them. O oh Allah, the world may forsake us but do not forsake us. O oh Allah, make us from amongst the ghuraba. Make us from amongst the strangers who remain firm on the deen no matter how the tides may change around us. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, save us from running and playing with the popularity game and contest. O Allah, allow us to remain firm on haqq. Allow us to remain firm on the sunnah. O Allah, save us from falling into the trap of doing things which are popular and which are murawwaj and which are cultural. O Allah, allow us to remain loyal to the sunnah of the Prophet O Allah, allow these programs to become a means of bringing a smile on the face of the Prophet May it make it a means of bringing happiness to the heart of the Prophet May it make it a means of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi welcoming us with open arms in the day of judgment. May it make it a means of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi being excited to see all of us, Ya Allah, on the day of judgment, meeting us and holding our hands and taking us to the Hawd al-Kawthar and granting us a chance to drink from his blessed hands and holding us and carrying us over the Sirat and allowing us to enter the highest levels of Jannah. Oh Allah, oh Allah, increase us in our love for him and increase him in, in his love for us. Oh Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to grant all of us your mahabba, your ma'rifa and your love. Oh Allah, I grant qubuliyah and acceptance to this event. From the beginning to end, oh Allah, whatever is, amount is left of this event, allow it to complete with afiyah, allow it to complete with well-being. Oh Allah, grant protection from all any, any attempt from attacks of shaitan and nafs. Oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, we ask you to grant special protection to this entire event and all the attendees of this event. Oh Allah, whatever khair has happened today and yesterday, it's only happened through your grace and your fadl. Allow the khair only to increase tomorrow and on Monday and beyond. Oh Allah, all the talks of our mashayikh and ulama were so amazing. Oh Allah, make it easy for the attendees and the speakers to practice on what I was shared. Oh Allah, accept and re reward the, the speakers and scholars who have come to us from far and wide. O oh Allah, those who traveled from far and wide, O oh Allah, accept their sacrifices. Allow them to gain from this event far more than they're expecting. Allow them to get rewarded for every cent that they have spent on this journey. O oh Allah, our volunteers and our students who are working tirelessly 24 hours a day, Ya Allah, we ask you, both men and women, that you grant them in their suffering or their difficulty, in their pain, in their tiredness, grant them such sweetness that the kings of this world cannot taste such sweetness. O oh Allah, grant them the sweetness of enjoying communication with you enjoying relationship with you. O oh Allah, make them your awliya. Make them your asfiya. O oh Allah, make every volunteer and every student of this madrasa. Ya Allah, your wali, Ya Allah. Make them your friend, Ya Allah. Make them your chosen servant, Ya Allah. Grant them their special wilaya. Grant them special ta'alluq with you. O oh Allah, make them from amongst those who work by day and cry at night. O oh Allah, grant barakah in the ilm of our students. Grant barakah in the health and the wealth of our volunteers. O oh Allah, any student and staff member and teacher who is going through any type of spiritual, emotional, physical or mental difficulty, 
Ya Allah, through the barakah of all of those who are present here and the a'mal today, O oh Allah, we ask you to grant all of them shifa. Grant them all shifa. Grant them all shifa. O oh Allah, increase them in their ilm and amal. Increase them in their spirituality. O oh Allah, we ask you to increase all of us in our ruhani and our spirituality. O oh Allah, there's so much to ask. We do not know how to ask. We don't have the ikhlas to ask. O oh Allah, we ask you to grant us all that which Rasulullah sallam had asked you of. We, oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from all that which Rasulullah sallam sought refuge in you from. O oh Allah, all the brothers and sisters who are listening online, on site, who will listen later on oh Allah whatever du'as they're making or will make whatever needs they have whatever du'as they should be making and have not asked oh Allah we ask you to grant us and all of them all of that and much 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 more subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ameen 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 Brothers, on your way out, inshallah, for those who are doing i'tikaf, a couple announcements. If you're doing i'tikaf here, please be mindful of those who are trying to sleep. Let's try our best to sleep on time. Fajr is 4.45, as you know. And we can pray our tahajjud. And we can go outside, enjoy the night, no problem. But please do not disturb those who are trying to go to sleep. And secondly, if you see any garbage anywhere, I request you to please kindly pick it up. The brothers are working 24 hours, shifts, but it's still not possible to keep up with the type of garbage we are, mashallah, creating here. So I request everyone to play their part to help clean up on your way out. Jazakumullah khairah.